in this section we'll implement and verify the private VLAN configurations so if you remember we already discussed that private VLANs can be implemented to prevent the host within the same VLAN from communicating directly now in that we got two types of VLANs we have something called private VLANs sorry primary VLANs and secondary VLANs so primary VLANs are the main VLANs and in that we are going to create multiple secondary VLANs and again in that secondary VLANs we got two type two categories isolated and community VLANs okay we can assign the secondary VLANs to any one of this category so isolated will not communicate with any other isolated port communicate community ports or community VLANs will communicate only within the same community now every port can be configured either it can be promiscuous ports which can communicate with all the host including isolated whereas the host ports can only communicate within with a promiscuous ports or they can only communicate within the same community private VLANs so this is our lab scenario which we are going to use for verifying the private VLANs so for verifying private VLANs I need to have a switch so I got switch 1 which is my 3560 switch which is acting as my centralized device which is going to connect to all my customer sites let's say let's take an example here router 1 and router 2 belong to one of my customer site ABC and I want to ensure that any traffic coming from router 1 they it router 2 also should be able to access that so all belongs to the same physical subnet they are all on the same subnet and the same time they are all belonging to the same primary VLAN and in my scenario I'm going to use the primary primary VLAN as VLAN number 10 now in that again I'll, I'll be creating some multiple secondary VLANs and I want to ensure that the customer ABC should be able to communicate with the other sites within the same within the same customer site let's say router 1 and router 2 belong to the same same company or the same organization and they are connecting to a centralized switch now similar way I got a company XYZ here and I want to ensure that this router find switch to belonging to those customer XYZ sites and they should be able to communicate with each other automatically and at the same time I got uh, another customer let's say this is my customer uh, PQR and this is my customer some X okay I want to ensure that the traffic coming from this customer should not go to any of the other other customer sites okay so that's the reason I'm going to make it as isolated here and then the same thing applies for 1.4 as well so they are part of the same physical subnet and also they belong to the same primary VLAN and then finally all the customer sites all the customers like ABC XYZ PQR and some X sites all must be able to access internet traffic which is connecting on switch 3 means that's what we are I'm going to configure this particular port as promiscuous ports you can see the diagram here so I'm creating multiple VLANs here so where VLAN 10 will be my primary VLAN in that primary VLAN I'm going to create one more secondary VLAN which is 100 which belongs to this community and they will only communicate within that same within the same VLAN 100 and then I'm going to make one VLAN as 500 which will be my isolated VLAN and then finally I'm going to make one more VLAN which will be my community VLAN again which will be 200 now these users can communicate with each other talk to each other these can talk to each other and these two are totally isolated they will not talk to any other site except the promiscuous port so they all can access this so this is our verification so in the lab I did most of the pre configurations already I have my devices connected the same way you can see here on the switch one and I also have the IP addresses pre configured so I did that pre configuration and I did not do anything other than that so just an IP addressing on the customer side and then all the physical connections exactly the same let's try to verify uh, getting into the console screen here so I got my switch one here you can see the output here you can see the console connection here uh, the CDP neighbors here it's exactly the same way I have the diagram here you can see uh, our switch one is going to connect to all the devices with the same exact ports if I go to each and every device and if I verify show IP interface brief and I already have the IP addressing pre configured here and if I try to verify I think they are in the same VLAN I'll try to verify the ping the connection between router 1 and router 2 and I'll try to verify the con con communication between router 1 and router 3 
and then switch 4 switch 4 is acting as my router 4 which belong to this side here so you can see the communication is there similar way if I try to go to 1.5 and same as 1.6 so which is my switch 2 so I should see the reply yes and finally I have switch 3 which is acting as my internet route it is configured with an IP addressing on 192.168.1.10 you can see the communication should be there so all the devices are connected properly exactly exactly the same way and these are the ports which I'm using now anyway by default they belong to the same VLAN and if I verify my VLAN configurations they belong to the default VLAN which is my VLAN 1 anyway as long as they are part of the same VLAN they can communicate now my requirement is I want to ensure that this R1 and R2 should communicate with each other they should be a part of the same community so that they can communicate with each other same and same thing applies for find switch 2 and the same and these two ports must be in isolated R3 and switch 4 and they all must be able to communicate with the promiscuous port so I need to configure VTP in this scenario so the first step we are going to do here is configure the VTP mode as a transparent mode on all, the, on all the ports connecting to the end devices in the VLAN 10 so which means I have the first thing in order to create, uh, configure the private VLAN the switch has to be in a transparent mode and then we are going to assign all these ports whatever the ports connecting to the end devices they, they will be a part of the VLAN 10 so that's the first step which we'll do let's try to do that so to do that I'll use I'll go to switch 1 and I'll say interface range command I'll start with interface F0 by 1 to 3 which is my R1 R2 R3 connections and then F0 by 22 which is connecting to switch 4 and then F0 by 5 which is connecting to router 5 and then switch 2 the port is F0 by 24 and then finally F0 by 20 I'm going to assign all these ports into my primary VLAN so in my scenario I'm going to use primary VLAN as my VLAN 10 so they all belong to the same VLAN so which means they can still communicate with each other but I want to ensure that they should not communicate with each other and as per my requirement by using private VLANs so the first thing you need to configure is you need to configure the switch whichever is configured with the private VLAN it has to be in the it has to be in a transparent mode so that's what I did here so my switch here is reason transparent mode so the next step I'm going to create a VLAN 100 200 and 500 which will be acting as my secondary VLANs where I'm going to use 100 and 200 as my community VLANs and VLAN 500 has to be my isolated VLAN okay VLAN 100 200 500 will be acting as my secondary VLANs and they should get associated with my primary VLAN that is VLAN 10 and to make this possible so we'll go and configure these commands here so the first thing we already did this VTP mode transparent and we have shifted the ports in the respective VLAN 10 all the ports now I need to say VLAN 10 the first step VLAN 10 private VLAN primary so I'm going to say private VLAN and then I'm going to say primary okay so now VLAN 10 will be my primary VLAN and then VLAN 100 I'm going to create VLAN 100 and then VLAN 100 will be my community VLAN you can see here I'm going to use VLAN 100 as my community VLAN and then I'm going to create VLAN 200 which will be also my community VLAN for different customer sites and then I'm going to create one more VLAN VLAN 500 which will be my isolated VLAN So I'm going to say isolated. Done. So now I created four VLANs here. If you verify, so I created VLAN 10, which is my primary VLAN, and then I I have just created VLAN 100, 200, 500. They they will be acting as my second secondary VLANs. So as of now they will be primary VLANs because I did not associate so what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate my primary VLAN with my respective secondary VLANs so next step is I'll go to VLAN 10 
and then I'll say primary v private VLAN association and I'm going to add my secondary VLANs VLAN 100 comma 200 okay so it has to be separated by commas without any spaces here now once we do this now to verify we can give a command called show VLAN private VLAN when I when I try to verify you can see this is my primary VLAN VLAN 10 and I got a uh, three separate secondary VLANs which I created and I uh, and I assigned 100 200 as community VLANs and then 500 will be my isolated VLAN okay so next step is so once we create a primary VLAN and then we have associated our secondary VLANs, the next step is we need to assign our specific ports into the respective VLANs, respective ports, port types we can say. So the first step what we'll do is we'll try to configure this port number 20 here. This port number 20 will configure it as a promiscuous port. Now promiscuous port do not belong to any VLAN, it's a type of the port which which can access, which can be accessed by any any uh, any type any other type of a uh, secondary VLANs so port number 20 which is connecting to my uh, switch 3 and we need to say switch port mode private VLAN promiscuous and then we have to do mapping okay. so I'll go to my switch 1 and I'll try to configure this respective ports port number 20 which is connecting to my switch 3 and I'll say switch port switch port mode and then I'm going to say private VLAN and this port is promiscuous port after that switch port private VLAN and then I'm going to say association mapping so when we are doing the isolated or community ports we, we use the host command when, so we are going to say mapping map our primary VLAN which is our primary VLAN 10 and then I'm going to map my secondary VLAN. Secondary VLAN means uh, what are the VLANs traffic can be allowed whichever coming from the secondary VLAN here. So in my scenario here it will be 100, 200 and 500 will be our secondary VLANs which which the this traffic from this VLANs will be permitted. So I'm going to say 100 comma 200 and then 500. So once we configure our specific port into promiscuous, the above command is going to assign the port to a primary VLAN and it's going to map your VLAN 100, 200 and 500. The next thing what we'll do is we'll try to configure port number F0 by 1 and F0 by 2 which is connecting to router 1 and router 2 which belongs to the same community or the same organization and I want them to be a part of the community VLAN and that VLAN is 100. So let's try to configure those two ports so that they can only communicate within uh, within in between them and they can also communicate with the promiscuous. So I'm going to say interface range F0 by 1 hyphen 2 a switch port mode and if we say private VLAN and the private VLAN is the host mode. So whenever you are assigning any specific port other than promiscuous we generally configure as a host if you are assigning a promiscuous port then we configure it as promiscuous mode now just the command starts with switch port mode remember that and switch port private VLAN and then we have to say host association and then we need to define my primary VLAN and then we have to define the secondary VLAN so I'm going to associate this port number 1 and 2 as a part of the VLAN secondary VLAN 100 which is again it's a community VLAN now same thing we need to do for the remaining two ports here I'm going to do the same thing for community VLAN 500 if you verify the commands so I'll apply the same thing for interface F0 by 5 comma F0 by 24 24 is my port which is connecting to switch 2 and router 5 and then the command will be the same command switch port mode private VLAN host and then I'm going to say switch port private VLAN host association but this time I'm going to associate with my community VLAN VLAN 200 so already we defined that VLAN 200 belongs to a community VLAN so we did that already now the next thing we need to do is we need to assign these two ports 
connecting to router 3 and switch 4 as a part of isolated. So I'll go to interface range F0 by 3 and then F0 by 22. Now here also the commands will be similar if you verify the commands. We need to simply say switch port mode private VLAN host. Sorry, not this one. Switch port mode private VLAN host and then switch port private VLAN host association and associating with the VLAN 500. So we don't define it exactly with isolated. When we define 200, it automatically will be your community VLAN. And okay, let's do this commands. Switch port mode private VLAN host and then switch port private VLAN host association. My primary VLAN is 10 and my secondary VLAN will be 500. So if you remember, we already associated the VLAN 100 with community and what are the ports assigned to that port number 1, port number 2 and port number 20. So promiscuous you can see promiscuous port is listed in all the secondary VLANs category and you can see uh, VLAN 200 that is my community VLAN here port number 5, port number 20 and 24. Now the same way I have isolated ports and they will be isolated with each other they will not communicate 3 to 322 and F0 by 20. So now the last step we need to do is we need to verify. So we did as per our requirement. Now if you verify show private VLAN, we did that just now. And then if you if you try to verify with this command show show interface status connected, you'll find it also lists your primary VLAN and with secondary VLAN here. Now verification when you try to verify router one, I'll start with router one. Now router 1 belongs to, so it, it can communicate with 192.168.1.2 because it's a part of the same community VLAN and then it, it can also communicate with 1.10. But if I try to communicate with 1.3 or 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, it will not be able to communicate and the reason is it's just very simple because even though they are part of the same subnet, even though they are part of the same primary VLAN, but still they are uh, differentiated. So we are just creating a secondary VLANs inside that, separating the traffic. A similar way, you can try communicating with 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. You will not be able to communicate. So let me try to cover check from router 3, which will be my access port. Let's try to verify from the isolated ports here, from the router 3. I'll try to ping my promiscuous port which is 192.168.1.10 I should be able to get the reply you can see I'm able to communicate with 1.10 but if I try to communicate with any other host here I, I will not be able to communicate because isolated port will not be able to communicate with any other isolated port here now similar we can try and check with any other host here now finally we'll try to verify our community VLAN 200 I'll go to router 5 and I'll try to communicate with within the same community VLAN which is 192.168.1.6. I should be able to communicate with 1.5, 1.6. They should be able to access each other but at the same time they can access the promiscuous port. They can communicate with the promiscuous port as well but if they try to communicate with any other community VLAN like VLAN 100 or isolated they will not be able to access. So this way we are going to differentiate the traffic in the same VLAN by using the concept of private VLANs.